Hi and welcome back to Grade Guide. This revision video on human reproduction is directed towards students completing the junior cycle science exam as part of the Irish curriculum. Based off the NCCA learning outcomes, five points we'll be revising in this video are what the term reproduction means. We'll identify, draw, label and describe diagrams of both the male and female reproductive systems. We'll study the menstrual cycle and define each of its four stages, as well as following the journey that sperm take through the female system in order for fertilization to take place. Reproduction is the creation of new individuals of the same species. All living things have the ability to reproduce so that they don't become extinct, although the way they reproduce can vary from organism to organism. In our video on microorganisms, we discuss a type of reproduction called asexual reproduction. But for this topic, we focus solely on reproduction in humans. The method that humans use to reproduce is called sexual reproduction, which is the creation of offspring from two parents. Each parent produces a gamete, also known as a sex cell, which are involved in reproduction. The male parent produces the male gamete, the sperm cell. The female parent produces the female gamete, the egg cell. During sexual reproduction, the nuclei of these two gametes, the sperm and egg cell, join together in fertilization to create a new individual. This is what the structure of a sperm and egg cell look like. Take note how the sperm cell has a long tail. This allows it to swim through the female reproductive system to find the egg and to fertilize it. Males begin to produce sperm cells once they become sexually mature, usually between the ages of 12 to 16. This is called puberty. Other changes that take place in a male during puberty include growth spurts, growth of facial, underarm and pubic hair, and the deepening of the voice as the voice box or larynx enlarges. This is a diagram of the male reproductive system. You need to be able to draw the diagram and add the following labels. The sperm duct, penis, urethra, scrotum and testis. The testis is where sperm cells are produced in a sexually mature male. Males have two testes, and these are held in a sack of skin called the scrotum. Sperm move from the testes through the sperm duct towards the penis. Glands along the sperm duct create seminal fluid. This seminal fluid is perfect for sperm to swim in, and together this sperm seminal fluid mix is called semen. The penis transfers semen into the female during sexual intercourse. The urethra is a tube that runs through the penis. It carries semen from the sperm duct out of the penis. Females begin to produce egg cells once they enter puberty, usually between the age of 10 to 16. Changes that take place in a female during puberty include the growth of body and pubic hair, widening of hips and development of breasts. Females begin to experience periods once they enter puberty. This is a diagram of the female reproductive system. You also need to know how to draw this diagram and add the following labels. The fallopian tubes, ovary, endometrium, uterus, cervix and vagina. The ovary is the female equivalent of the testes. Females have two ovaries and it's where egg cells are produced in a sexually mature female. An egg cell moves from an ovary into a fallopian tube and the uterus is where a baby will develop if a pregnancy occurs. The vagina is where sperm are released into the female system and the cervix is the narrow opening where sperm gain entry to the uterus. We haven't mentioned the endometrium here, and that's because it plays an important part in something called the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle describes a number of changes which happen every 28 days in the female system to prepare it for a possible pregnancy. Take note that the menstrual cycle only happens in females who've reached puberty and are not pregnant. Also, the figures given here are generalizations. For example, on average, the menstrual cycle lasts 28 days, but in some females it could be longer, shorter or completely irregular. There are four stages to the menstrual cycle you need to learn. The first stage is menstruation, more commonly known as a period. In days one to five of the cycle, because no pregnancy has happened, the endometrium detaches from the wall of the uterus and exits the female through the vagina. This is usually accompanied by blood and can be painful for the female. The next stage takes place from days 6 to 13. The endometrium begins to build back up once again in the uterus. On day 14, one ovary releases an egg cell into the fallopian tube. This is called ovulation. 
for the remaining days, 15 to 28 of the cycle, the endometrium will remain in place. If a pregnancy happens in this time, the endometrium will nourish the developing baby. If no pregnancy happens, after day 28, the cycle will start over once again and another menstruation will take place. For a couple who are trying for a baby, a period of time known as the fertile period is a time during the menstrual cycle where sexual intercourse is more likely to result in a successful pregnancy. The fertile period lasts from days 8 to 16 of the menstrual cycle. This period is determined by how long an egg cell and sperm cell can survive for in the female. We've seen that an egg cell is released from the ovary on day 14, and an egg cell's lifespan is two days. A sperm cell can survive roughly six days, so if sexual intercourse took place on day eight, sperm cells could still be present in the female by the time the egg cell is released six days later. So once sperm enter the female, what path do they take on their way to the egg cell? During sexual intercourse, millions of sperm are released into the vagina of the female. They make their way through the cervix and uterus before entering one of the fallopian tubes. Only one sperm cell finds the egg cell in the fallopian tube before fertilizing it. Fertilization happens when the egg cell and sperm cell meet. It's the fusion or joining of an egg cell and a sperm cell to form a zygote. One sperm cell bores its way into and penetrates the egg cell. The nucleus of the egg cell, which contains the mother's DNA, and the nucleus of the sperm cell, which contains the father's DNA, join or fuse together to create a new cell called a zygote. The zygote is the first cell of what will grow to become the new individual, and it has the combined DNA of both the mother and the father in its nucleus. So that's it for this video on human reproduction. Make sure you're revised over each of these five points in preparation for your exams. There's lots of new terminology in the topic, so make sure you're familiar with each of these keywords you can see on screen now. Thanks for watching this grade guide video. Make sure to take a look at our part two video on the human reproduction topic, where we'll study the events of pregnancy and birth, as well as medical and societal issues surrounding reproduction. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Best of luck with your revision.